Hello everybody, this is Timothy Dixon coming to you today. Thank you, Lord. I have a dream I want to share with you, and I have a song, uh, an old song that uh, I'd like to sing a little bit of it. Yet when I'm facing the chilling hand of death, where could I go to the Lord? Where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go to the Lord? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend that'll save me in the end. Where could I go but to? Where could I go but to the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where could we go but to the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. We are facing times that we have never, we've never faced before. We are going through, through times that we've We've never went through the things that we've gone through in this time. We are living in the dark ages of where that there is a a fight. You know, Jesus said in one place talking about a fight between the kingdoms. He said that that there would come a time that, of course, it's always, he said that there would be kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And we're living in them days to where that there's nations against nations. There's war and rumor of war everywhere. But more than ever, there's kingdom against kingdom, the kingdom of God against the kingdom of Satan. And it is the most uh, disregarded uh, thing in Christianity is the difference between the two kingdoms. We have a tendency that we want to always preach the most encouraging things and which we should preach encouraging words and encouraging uh, 
uh, messages and scriptures and stuff to help us um, maintain our Christianity and to be encouraged through the day and through our life, through our walk with God. But we also need the truth. We need the truth told to us and we don't need a lie. We don't need someone to tell us good things just because we're afraid that we're going to lose an offering. We don't need to be worried that we're going to offend someone because we'll hurt their feelings telling them that the end of time is here and that we are facing a, a demonic oppression where Satan's imps and powers of all that's in the darkness is, is parading against God's people. And he's trying to fight every avenue and every access that he can stop. He's going to stop it. But there's power in the name of Jesus and there's power in the blood of Jesus. I want to talk about a dream here that I've had a Uh, here recently it's a rather short dream but very very uh, very entailing and very troubling I know that probably one of the first videos that I put up when I was in my truck had to do with a whirlwind on the landing on the Capitol steps up there and uh, Kamala and Biden on the donkey and the donkey dies out from under him and a whirlwind lands and, and uh, a man comes out of the whirlwind and a man comes out with a staff down towards the edges of the step and Then I've seen the one, the first, I think the very first video that it was something right at a million uh, people looked at the video in just about a week's time was where I saw the the capital being overtaken and this dream was way before ever before January the 6th ever happened and uh, the reason that I even started on the channels was for that reason for one particular several ministers asked me that I, I really needed to put my dreams up so I decided to, and I'm looking through the different dreams, and uh, the ministers that knew me knew the dream that that talked about where that the uh, curtains in the Capitol was on fire, the National Guard was on the ground, and different things like that. They know that I'd already told that dream some time back, but I just didn't think that it was a time that was going to be near. I thought it would be something way off because of the nature of what it looked like was going on I just thought it just wouldn't be but it 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 definitely happened uh, through the January days of 20, 2020 and I want to go ahead and get this dream here we are uh I dreamed the Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C. was on fire. There was fire and smoke coming out of the top floor of the building. If you're facing the Supreme Court building, 
It'll be the second and the third top windows on the front side of the Supreme Court. The left, if you're facing it, it'll be the left front side top two windows. Um, the first window wasn't nothing coming out, but the there was a well, those first three windows, second and third, first, second, third window up on that left side, up on the top, there was fire bellowing out and smoke just bellowing out. And the building was, uh, the uh, building was being evacuated. Uh, and in the front side, all around all the sides of the building everywhere, there was the Homeland Security Police, their uniforms. Uh, it was marked uh, Homeland Security Police, HSP, and uh, marked on the uniforms. And there was just tons of, uh, of FBI agents marked FBI. The United States Marshal was there, just police and, and uh, law enforcement everywhere I mean just everywhere uh, there was a uh, a fire truck ladder like a ladder truck there right on that front looked like they had pulled up somehow on that edge of the lawn of the building somehow with with uh, a hose or the top ladder hose you know shooting inside the building of the Supreme Court And uh, and these uh, law enforcement agencies was was just everywhere all around, and they were uh, the building was being evacuated, and there were all kinds of law enforcement in Washington D.C. around and underground rail system, the metro. There had been an explosion in the metro system cars underneath. And there was someone being held hostage, a lady, a dark complected man that was from the Middle East. He had a backpack open and tied around the lady sitting in her lap, sitting on a bench underground, which the, uh, the back tap Pack was sitting on the lady's lap and she, he had a, a rope pulled around her with the backpack and it was open in the front and you could see all kinds of explosives and wiring and stuff it was just uh, wired to her and wired inside the backpack he was sitting on a bench like outside the commuter place where you sit to board the train the metro train and uh, <clears throat> and then uh, then all at once, I was uh, I was walking down a hallway uh, of some kind of an executive office building, uh, in Sacramento, California. There was an office with about thirty desks set up with computers. And, and they had a person at each of the desk. Uh, and the sides of this room, there was a joining offices that was around the outer edges of this room. And the center was desks and, and uh, computers and different stuff like that. Uh, but uh, the surrounding, you could enter into the office and shut the door for lack of, of, of privacy. But the front was uh, glass, see-through glass. It wasn't a, uh, <clears throat> uh, a room that was private that you couldn't see through. It was private as far as hearing what they were saying, but you could see through the windows. And um, inside one of the offices, there were six men discussing the takedown and interference with the coming president. I looked on one 
of the walls and the calendar that was up was November and it was November the 24th of 2024 that was seemed to be really the 24 was bigger than all the other dates on the calendars there but then I walked outside of the office building and when I walked outside I was downtown downtown Sacramento California and I looked up in the sky and and there was all kinds of airplanes jet airliners and and all kinds of planes in the sky there was so many planes that it was not possible that that many planes would be in the sky like that crossing all over each other uh, from looking you know you look up there was just planes all around twisting all around it, it's just that's impossible in the natural because they wreck like that but in the dream they were everywhere just literally everywhere the skies was full of traffic and uh, it looked like just a lot of white and red dots blinking everywhere uh, in the clouds and uh, then all, all of a sudden I heard I heard like a real loud click like you'd take maybe a big uh, uh, a power uh, arm if you throw the power on a big breaker on a building or something a big arm it throws it up makes a big racket when you throw that power on I heard a big click real loud and when I heard that, everything, everything, the skies, the city, everything that you look went total, totally black. There was no internet. There was no, uh, everything was, had been knocked completely down and out the, the, uh, the, uh, all of the internet channels that you could think about was down. Um, and there was just total darkness, uh, total darkness. I know that um, the enemy is definitely making plans to attack Christianity and the United States with Christianity again. Uh, they are not done. They uh, uh, they have it all in. You know they've. Uh, but we, we, we need to pray. We need to stay focused. We need to stay and stand with each other. If we've ever in our lives stood for something, we need to stand now. We need people. We need people that's... Uh, we need people going across the United States that's uh, uh, getting with the people, praying with the people, and, and evangelizing. We need this right now. We need everybody that, that can to be about their father's business, to uh, go out and do everything that you can possibly do to keep Christianity alive. We are in a time and a fight for our lives, a fight for our Christian life, a fight for the righteous, a fight for uh, the survival, praise God. But I read the end of the book, and we won. And uh, But I know... <clears throat> That we have to, um, we have to stay focused. We have to stay um, 
ready to serve. We have to stay willing to uh, fight this fight and not give up, not give up. Uh, <clears throat> I am being shadow banned. Uh, there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> ministers like me, anyway, or people that's, that's dreaming like we're dreaming or we got the messages that we got or uh, there's big folks that don't want us uh, airing anything out there. Uh, and it's not just about President Trump. It's about hope. They don't want hope out there. But if you uh, will, this would help me share the video, share my channel, share my video channel, lead, give people my uh, website information, Timothy V. Dixon Ministry dot org. And uh, that right there is a, a definite link to uh, all of my uh, my channels, my uh, videos and stuff like that. We're trying to, we're still trying to find all the videos that uh, YouTube has uh, had took. Uh, but uh, let the let the word out. Share, share, share. Uh, if you have not subscribed, like the video, uh, and uh, hit the like button. If you like the the video, like what you're seeing. Um, and subscribe, subscribe to us, write to us, write to us at Timothy V. Dixon Ministry uh, at Post Office Box 417, Midland City, Alabama, 36350, Midland City. And uh, we would love to hear from you. We are fixing to start uh, this coming week, this coming Monday, actually, on the property again. And uh, we're going to be getting everybody that we know uh, out there the following Saturday. And we're going to try to clear every bit of the debris that might be anywhere on the property and get that took care of, hopefully, all in, in just a little short time. Uh, maybe a couple of days would be good. But uh, we are believing God for uh, the finances. Uh, to to do the church and uh, we appreciate you we love you and we thank you for all that you are doing for the ministry thank you for all that you're doing uh, to to help and uh, this definitely it makes to where we can uh, do the meetings that we do we can bring our our tents we can bring our equipment we can bring revival to areas and and those of you that knows me knows that I don't charge to come. I do not charge to come. Uh, the Lord has has blessed me, and I take my money, and I do this. And uh, that's I think probably what the devil hates most about me is the Lord's blessed me personally to be able to to do what I do. And, uh, and it's with the help of others that's helping uh, with their finances and different stuff like that, donations. It's just really made it to where God is really reaching a lot of people. We're doing a lot in Africa uh, right now. We are really trying to uh, do all that we can do for uh, Pastor Tara Aluka with the Pentecostal uh, Outreach church there in Uganda uh, we we have a lot of faith in in pastor there we have a lot of faith in him uh, and uh, there's a brother from Trinidad that we uh, we really love him brother Joel him and his wife has been here in the United States a little bit he's gonna help us uh, with the paperwork to get pastor Tara over here to the United States so um, we love and appreciate uh, every one of you. Write to us and uh, 
tell somebody about the meeting coming up in uh, McAllen, Texas. It is going to be a healing crusade, a divine healing crusade. Miracles, miracles, miracles. We believe in miracles. We believe in divine healing. And we are coming there for that reason and that reason only, divine healing, healing for the soul. So tell somebody about the meeting that's coming up in McAllen. Come be with us if you're in the Texas area and can be there on them days. Please come join us be with us. If you're a minister, uh, a pastor, evangelist, whatever it may be you're calling in the church, if you would want to join us and back us uh, there, please come and uh, you can be a part of us and uh, be up there with us and help us help us pray for the people. If you're a pastor and believing in divine healing and stuff, just come be with us. And uh, we, we appreciate and love every one of you. God bless you is my prayer. Bye-bye.